He has had sexual harassment sue or claims against him over and over and over again, yet it seems that you're not a model unless you get photographed by Terry Richardson. Girls that I've talked to, whether or not they even shot with him had done something compromising or had been asked to do something compromising. And, and he will ask you to take your clothes off at the casting and in some, in some cases, you know, uh, give him sexual favors. We're talking about, yes. you know, nice. serious, you know, <laughs> allegations of sexual assault and abuse. Mm -hmm. That happens frequently in our industry. Okay, YouTube, today we talk. A few months ago, a video from a French YouTuber, Le Roi des Rats, got a lot of attention. To sum up, he analyzes the phenomenon of photographers who manipulate models through their authority in the community in order to obtain sexual favors and arrest or assault them. And he draws a parallel with the Weinstein case. On my Instagram, I was therefore asked for my opinion as a photographer who worked often with models and who has done lingerie and nude. So let's go. In this video, I will give you my opinion on that topic and we'll try to analyze and understand this phenomenon of manipulative photographers. In the second part of the video, I will address two types of people. If you are a photographer, well, I will tell you everything you should do or not do to avoid being creepy. And I will also address potential models who might be watching, giving them some keys to make sure their collaboration goes well. And to do so, it will be more interesting to let someone who's better able to talk about it, a model you've already seen quite a few times on the channel. And it's me. Good day YouTube and we've got a lot to say so it might be a bit long you've got all the time codes in the description to go to the parts you're interested in. Wow I sound like a real YouTube girl. It's always difficult to talk about a topic like that when you are directly involved because you know how you work. I know other photographers and I know how they work. So the first reaction is always rejection. It's a generalization, they're just a couple of assholes and they're the one who will stain the whole profession. Except you just have to talk for five minutes with any model. Yeah. I don't know a lot of model that is not concerned. So it can start from inappropriate or gravely comments to really, really creepy situation. But yes, we all have many stories like that to tell. So even though it can't statistically be the majority, as much as I would like it to be, it's not an epiphenomenon. There are problems that plague photography, like ego problems, for example, but we won't talk about them here. The problem of sexual harassment is a very complex one. And in this case, I don't think we can compare it to the Weinstein case. It's not relevant. What's happening with Weinstein is a person using his power to force other people under his authority to do what he wants. This is not a phenomenon that is peculiar to film producer and therefore is not peculiar to photography either. Unfortunately, we live in a world where a lot of powerful people will use their power to behave like predators. And it's not specific to the image industry, cinema or photography. It's the same thing in big companies, in politics. Sexual harassment is a phenomenon that affects all professions all strata of society. It's extremely complex. So when we talk about manipulative photographer, the problem is photographer. Whereas we could say manipulative manager of a big company, it's the same type of harassment. The influence that some people have on other people. The question is, is there something inherent in photography that encourages this kind of abuse? Mm, I'm afraid there is. I think that at a very high level of professionalists, very big photographers, or even in model agencies, it's Weinstein style harassment, taking advantage of the people below you in the hierarchy. But at a lower professional level, done to the amateur, there's another problem. You see, photography is an accessible art, especially nowadays. Anyone can have a camera. And we are living, more or less, in an era of sexual freedom that makes nude photography whether it encompasses artistic nudity, erotism, boudoir, etc. Well, it's socially accepted, it's part of the mores. It's even well regarded, you're not considered a pervert because you take or do nude photos. And this accessibility and respectability make it easy for people who don't give a damn about photography as an art or aesthetic, but who are there well for naked girls. We are not going to lie to each other, it's mostly female as a problem. It's going to give them an excuse easy access to situations where they can legitimize or try to legitimize inappropriate behavior at the very least to disgusting and reprehensible actions. And so, yeah, 
there's a real problem with photography. Contrary to the major problem in society, with photography at least I have some beginnings of a solution. All good collaborations start with the right partners. You have to find the right people you want to work with. Finding the right photographer is essential and that goes through the portfolio. You have to analyze the photographer's portfolio before each collaboration. Every photographer has one. Even if he's just starting out, it's great to start out. And I've already shot with guys who are more or less amateur. But first, I was always able to appreciate the quality of their work. If a photographer is a beginner, he can take pictures of his relatives, he can do photo workshops where there will be models, so he necessarily has a portfolio, an Instagram to show. If he doesn't send you anything with the excuse of, I'm a beginner, sorry, but it's a not. So as a photographer, you understand what you have to do, whether it's on your own website, on a dedicated Instagram, on Flickr or 500px, even on Facebook. Oh no. Don't put your photo on Facebook, it's not professional and the compression is awful. You must have a portfolio and your pictures have to be good. If anyone can do the same thing with a smartphone, as a model, if you receive this, it's either a trap or it's just someone who's just starting out. And I'm sorry if it's your case, but that means you don't have the level to work with a model. It's not a problem, this channel is actually made to learn. Starting photography, it's great, but you can't waste a model's time when the pictures will be bad. It's not a criticism, it's just the progression curve, which is the same for everyone. As Mano has said, you can shoot your friends or you can do photo workshops to improve. His portfolio should also match what you want to do. It's very important that you like his style, that his universe matches you. The pictures he might take with you should really be the kind of image you want to have on your portfolio. I know too many girls who accepted shoots simply because the photographer had small fame and that it would give them visibility. Whereas they didn't like at all his work or didn't want to do it like lingerie or nude. Tell yourself that what you're going to publish on your portfolio is what will attract photographers of the same style. So once again, only post on your portfolio what you like and what you want to do. Your portfolio is a reflection of your work as a model. If you respect this rule, a photographer doesn't have to ask you for personal pictures of you, especially nudes of you, to prepare his shooting, see how you take the light and other bullshit. <laughs> if he wants to see how you look, he goes to your portfolio. And if the models follow Mano's advice, as a photographer, the golden rule is to not to contact a model to ask for nude photo shoots if she has never done any. It's not normal that all, and I mean all models, receive messages asking for it when they've never published anything like that. There are lots of models who do it, and whatever the kind of picture you want to take, with a little research, you'll find the person who has already worked in the kind of project you're looking for. So don't worry, if a model wants to do a nude photo shoot, She'll choose the photographer herself to start with. She's not waiting for a second for you to come heroically into her life to suggest and convince her to do it. Before starting to work with someone, it can be a good thing to meet each other in order to judge, well, if the guy is not creepy. So obviously, the characteristic of a manipulator or a pervert is that you don't automatically see it right away. But sometimes with some people, there are behaviors that we don't feel right and we have to trust ourselves. Maybe wrongly, that's for sure. But in this kind of situation, I prefer to listen to myself. So meeting each other means sitting down for just half an hour in a public space at reasonable hours. It's not a date, it's a professional briefing. It will allow you to talk about the project, to communicate specifically what you want to do and what you don't want to do, and to make the photographer say exactly what he has in his mind. I agree, meeting the person is important, even as a photographer. Believe me, models have their flaws too, and I clearly don't want to work with everybody. I'm looking to create relationships, people I can work with over time, and therefore who are professional, who will arrive on time, for example, etc. Unfortunately, I don't have too much time to meet the person before anymore, just to talk. But my policy is that I never do a big project with a model if I haven't already had the opportunity to work with him or her. 
Instead, I do one hour micro shoots. We walk around town and take portraits. That way we get to know each other and at least at the end, we still get a few pictures out of it. If you can't meet the person physically, and even if you have met him, there are Instagram or Facebook groups reserved for models and forbidden to photographers to exchange and warn each other about borderline photographers. I think it's great. But at the same time, you have to take into account that we live in a world where there are agencies specializing in writing fake comments on the internet to bring down the competition. It's common in hospitality, restaurants or hotel, for example. It's a pretty gray area. Nico, what do you think? Uh, me? Uh, well, no opinion. Clearly, I think the risk of false testimony exists. But what is the percentage? It seems minimal compared to the real warnings. So yes and no. Thank you, Nicola, for your clear-cut opinion. Oh, you're welcome. I think these groups are really useful. A false testimony is not so hard to spot and it will probably be made by a fake account that is also easily spottable. Or don't hesitate to contact directly the models who have already worked with the photographer to get their feedback. The world of models is a microcosm in the end, where we can exchange our ex impression and experiences without judgment. To sum up, the most important thing before a photo shoot is communication. If the photographer is not clear, don't hesitate to ask the right questions. Where does the shooting take place? How long? What kind of images? What kind of clothes? Lingerie, etc. So it's not usual in TFP, it's a bit annoying to do it, I know, but if the shoot is paid, you must have a contract. And in the contract, the type of shooting, the type of photos, must be well explained and detailed. Well, she actually said it all. All this type of shooting in particular, there's no room for surprise. You can create with the model a Pinterest or you can post examples of photos that interest you. I have a mood board for each project. She must have a clear vision of what you are going to do together. When it's a normal portrait photo shoot and suddenly you said, oh, I have a creative urge, get naked. That's for psychopaths. Don't do it. Yes, you can bring someone if you want, period. Why is it understandable that some photographers have a no escort during the shoot policy, which I for a while was the same. A lot of photographers are hindered in their creative process, especially for those who are just starting out and are shy, which I can understand even if it doesn't concern me too much. Now, what bothers me is the person who will intervene in an untimely way, the one who has some notions of photography and therefore who will teach you your job. In short, the annoying guy. And no, these are not isolated cases. We live in a world full of annoying people. There's also the one who touches everything and risks breaking your equipment or stealing it. I know two photographers who have had that happen to them. Inviting people you don't know into your studio with the gears you have as a photographer is a risk. I also had the very funny case of a model. We were on an outdoor photo shoot and we were in the rush. She came with a girlfriend and she was just talking together. I had to interrupt myself every two seconds to let them finish their conversation. And then she reproached me that she was disappointed because her girlfriend was bored. She had nothing to do. Anyway, all these cases make bringing an escort can be... I'm looking for another expression. No, actually, it works well with this one. It can be a pain in the ass, really. Okay, it's understandable if a photographer tells you he doesn't accept escorts. If he does, it doesn't necessarily mean that's a trap. You should just reassure him. You can write to him, I understand the inconvenience it can cause. My escort will be very discreet and will not intervene during the shoot. I am very professional about it, but to do my job at best, I need to come accompanied. It also means that you really have to take into account these reasons. Coming with your jealous boyfriend is not necessarily the best idea, but a friend who knows how to be discreet when necessary and who you trust is the best. Well, okay. As long as a model is aware of the reason why you will say no for an escort, it means she will make sure all the possible unpleasantness doesn't happen. And in this case, 
There's no reason why your photographer wouldn't want a model to come with someone. If she guarantees you the professionalism of the session, bring someone is on the contrary a positive point. The more comfortable she will be, the more she will give the best of herself. But be aware, not all models will think about it. It's up to you to explain it. If a model asks to come with an escort, the answer should be yes. But you explain that the person will have to be discreet and respect the fact that we are working. Be crystal clear from the beginning and everything will be fine. Remember, this isn't a negotiation. If you've reassured him but he still refuses you to come with somebody, if he takes it personally like, oh, I'm not a pervert, you'll be comfortable with me, don't worry, blah, 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 blah. You don't have to argue, it's a no. It's either a guy who's trying to trap you or simply a guy who feels insulted that he could be seen as a pervert and who therefore doesn't have enough empathy to understand your point of view and sorry, but you don't know him. You don't want to work with that kind of person. If you don't know the photographer, no matter how famous he is, it's better to go with an escort. Okay, here we go, the photo shoot. Let's talk straight. Nude photography, erotic photography, boudoir or whatever is an artistic genre. But we should not be hypocritical and hide behind heart. This type of image is sexualized. That's even the point to aestheticize the voluptuousness. You can say, yeah, but here I wanted to express the light, the shapes, the forms. You can do that with anything. The truth, the outcome, is that as human, as sexual creature, we like to see naked bodies. The models like their bodies and the effect it produces. Why is erotic photography actually a very complicated genre? It's not just taking photos of naked people. Erotic photography is the aesthetic representation of intimacy, where there are two people who don't know each other and therefore where intimacy doesn't exist. It's like cinema, it's a story, a representation of reality, not reality itself. The photos you take with your life partner will never be the same as the one you take with the model. You visually recreate intimacy in the form of a work of art, in the form of a media. You don't create intimacy for real in reality with the person. Keep that in mind. My point is that a nude photo shoot is not flirting, it's creation. I'm human, I'm a man, and I'm not going to lie, even with the best will in the world, in front of scantily clad models, yes, I found it rather pleasant. The model is human, undressing in front of a stranger puts the situation in the field of intimacy. But as soon as you start shooting and you have to start thinking about the framing, the light, believe me, your brain goes straight to work mode. As soon as the model starts pausing, playing, it's work. All that philosophical chit chat to say what? The creative process must be separated from the result. The result is an erotic image. The shooting is a professional creative process. The worst thing is that since it's about intimacy, a lot of photographers are shy and try to make it look that they are not and not to mention the real perverts who are well aware of what they're doing. I'm sure a lot of photographers are not even aware that they're being creepy. So how not to be or appear creepy for photographer by a model, it's right now. Let's start with the basics. No matter where the shoot is, the model has to have a place where her privacy is preserved, a room to change clothes out of sight, a bathroom or something else, but she must be able to isolate herself. When we change places, room, etc., the model must be able to put something on her back. Her things or more professional will be up to you to provide her with a bathrobe. Yes, even if we see her naked in the photos. Yes, when she changes position, she has the right to cover her private parts, even if we have seen them in the photos. Talking about that, Eye contact. It's easy to spot when you analyze the scene, the light, or simply when you stare at her boobs or whatever. So don't do it. It's all about behavior. Nico said it, the environment has to be as professional as possible. You have to avoid sexualizing the atmosphere by the vocabulary, by throat sound like mmm. Oh, you like it's disgusting. You look like a perv redneck. You look like a redneck too if you give us little nicknames. My darling, my beauty. 
Honey, not, no way. We don't know each other. No way, man. If there is a time to avoid sexual humor and gravely remarks, it's now. There is no way in any dimension that it's going to make a model feel comfortable at that moment. To direct the model, avoid sexual words like butt or boobs, but use heap, back, chest for instance. Or better, show the model directly what you want with the photos you have chosen together with Pinterest for example. It's important to compliment the model but do it on her work as a model. If she does it well, not on her body especially not in this situation. No touching. There is a lot of tactile photographer and it's not a problem on a normal shoot. They will reposition an arm, a chin. Well, of course you ask before you touch. Obviously you don't manipulate someone like that without asking first. But in a lingerie shoot or nude, it's not possible. No touching. You do not touch, period. In one word, Keep it professional. Professional doesn't mean it can't be fun and nice, but fun and nice doesn't mean flirting. Last but not least, and here I'm talking to the models, I think that if you have been the victim of such behavior, you should not hesitate to report it to the police if there has been an assault, or at least to speak up. Does the murder on the girls who testify really exist? I don't know. I don't have the answer. Maybe. But I also think it spreads by those who have an interest in the fact you believe that, namely the aggressors. I think times are changing and fortunately victims' testimonies are taken much more seriously nowadays. It's better to be blacklisted by three assholes than to be assaulted. Photography is also a great world full of creative people who just want to create and with them you'll never have a problem finding jobs and projects. Okay, I think we've covered the most important things and I hope we've been able to help both the model and the photographers make any photo shoot a good and fun experience. If you have any specific questions, you can send us a message on our respective Instagrams or on my Twitter. If you have any other advice, whether you are a photographer or model, please feel free to share it in the comments. As far as we're concerned, I think we've pretty much said it all. Good job. Poula -la -la -la. Okay, see you mates. And keep on creating. your beautiful English accent. <laughs>